dream along with me. I'm on my way to the star. Come along. Ladies and gentlemen, the Perry Como Show. And tonight, you are the guests of RCA, world leader in electronics, and RCA Victor, first in sight and sound. Sunbeam, the best electric appliance is made. Also, America's pioneer manufacturer of home workshop tools like the Sunbeam Drillmaster Drill. Glass Wax, America's number one glass cleaner, and Snowy Preventive Bleach, America's number one preventive bleach. Both products of the Gold Seal Company. And here is Perry Como. from Miami Beach, Florida this week. We flew in the whole crew for a very special occasion, the celebration of the 30th birthday of the National Broadcasting Company. We jumped at the invitation to come down here because we were all a little tired. 
Now there'll be a short pause while everybody says, from what? <laughs> anyway, we're still a little tired, but it's sort of a uh, kind of a suntan tired. Under this tan is the biggest tail you ever saw. Our audience tonight, we have uh, our audience, I mean audience in the New America, Americana Hotel, and what a hotel this is, too, friends, are all the people who run NBC's great affiliate stations. Affiliates, we bid you welcome. Those, of course, are our guests in the audience, and now we'd like to introduce our guests on the show. We want you to meet, not right now, but I'll just name the people for you, wonderful people, people uh, like the very, very beautiful Gina Lola Brigida. We have the very wonderful Joe Stafford. We have Johnny Ray. We have a little lady, Melinda Marks. And our special guest, her father, Harry Ritz. <laughs> That's enough applause for the girl. Now, how about me? <laughs> Two days on the Santa Fe for that. <laughs> Still applauding for the girl. Good evening, NBC affiliates. The secret word for tonight is CBS. If anybody here says the secret word, don't bother to turn in your expense account. <laughs> don't worry, kid. I'll get you on the show. <laughs> Groucho, would you mind... Uh... <laughs> would you mind introducing me to the young lady? <laughs> I'd be glad to. Who are you? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Perry Como. I'm sorry. You'll have to pick another name. <laughs> I already told her I was Barry Como. <laughs> What's the use of horsing around? I promised this girl a job on the show. A job? Yes, this is Perry Como, the boy vocalist on my show tonight. <laughs> Perry, I want you to meet an old friend of mine. I've known her all day. <laughs> Matter of fact, she's my niece. Your niece? Yes, years ago, I used to run around with her aunt. <laughs> Uncle's out front tonight, huh? Gracho, Put her on the what show, Perry. What does she do, Gracho? What does she do? She's a longshoreman. <laughs> and if she doesn't get a job, the boat's going to sail. <laughs> and without me. Now, what are we going to do about it? Well, I don't know, Gracho. Right now, I have a number. Well, I hope it's the right number, because mine's turning out to be the wrong number. Come on, let's go. By the way, what'd you say your name was? Uh, my name is Elvis. Uh. <laughs> That's what you call uh, Americana service. Thank you, girl. See, the reason they put this sort of stuff out for me, you know what happens with me when it comes to the hands. Singing a song, I don't know why I'm getting tired now in my pockets or this way, or like this. This way it keeps me busy, you know. Cindy, oh Cindy, Cindy, don't you let me down. Write me a letter soon and I'll be homeward bound. I joined the Navy to see the world, but nowhere could I find a girl as sweet as Cindy, the girl I left behind. I've sailed the wide world over, I can't get her out. Cindy, oh, Cindy, 
send me, don't you let me down. Write me a letter soon and I'll be homeward bound. I see her face in every way, her lips kiss. second visit to our show, and he's always welcome. Here he is doing one of his latest recordings. Look homeward bound, ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Ray. Johnny Ray! <laughs>
John, you get more terrific every time I hear you. Thank you very much, Perry. We're going to do a little number a little later on, you, Joe Stafford, and myself. So would you stick around? All you got to do is ask me. All right, boy. And now, friends, another one of our guests for tonight. We are so... We have... <laughs> In case you're interested, these are standard equipment on the 5070 Sotos. <laughs> Go on, girls. Uh, wait for me in the swamps. Huh? <laughs> See you later, alligator. <laughs> Perry, it's obvious that you are known as the uh, <laughs> you are known as the Neapolitan Nightingale for a very good reason. You sell a lot of records. And everybody that comes in your show gets a plug for their records, and I'd like to plug my latest record. Well, uh, where is the record? Don't hold me so tight. I'm not leaving until I get paid, anyway. <laughs> Did you say, where is the record? Where is the record? Well, the police have it. Uh, <laughs> oh, here it is. I made it in 49. It hasn't moved yet. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the label on the record? Well, from the way it's been selling, I think it's poison. <laughs> Oh, Groucho, I mean, what is the title of the song? Well, you know, people write songs about New York, Miami, California. Nobody has ever written a song about my favorite town, Omaha, Nebraska. I once met a girl in Omaha. She hated me and I hated her. It was Mutual of Omaha. Oh. I just use that joke for insurance. And if Mutual hears about it, you may get life. <laughs> However, ladies and gentlemen, my PC. That's the first one I've had all night. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I'll throw here's... you one later. <laughs> the same one, too. <laughs> here's Grasso This is known Marks. as cutting the script. <laughs> you know, we were a couple of minutes over when we went into this thing. And two martinis. <laughs> We may have to cut this song out if you keep talking. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Groucho Marx, assisted by the Ray Charles Singers and Mitchell Ayers and the orchestra, doing a beautiful ballad, Omaha, Nebraska, written by Groucho Marx and Harry Ruby. <laughs> A man sat by the fireplace, the fire, it was out. It was out because the logs were soaking wet. Were soaking wet. This going on all through the song, through the days, when I'm on his mother's knee, which, by the way, was also soaking wet. So soaking wet. He then put on his hat and coat, and grabbed a nearby cane and turned into the fireplace these words he did explain there's a place called Omaha, Nebraska in the foothills of Tennessee my sweetie told me that Someday she'd meet me at the corner of Delancey Street and Avenue B. From the shores of California to the rock-bound coast of Maine, we'll settle down in Washington, D.C. There's a place called Omaha, Nebraska. In the foothills of Tennessee, in the foothills of Tennessee, there's a place called Omaha, Nebraska. Each night when day is done. We'll watch the setting sun and listen to the mockingbird sing Mother McCree. When it's snowing in Alaska, where the Swanee River flows, I love you like the honey loves the bee. Best things in life are 
comes time for another one of our guests. This, uh... No, 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 Gailey, you don't understand. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, let us get this straight. I don't own the entire hotel. I, I just have an interest in it. And you're it. <laughs> Show this, this young lady's name is Gina Lola Brigida. A likely story. <laughs> the phony name have I ever heard one. <laughs> Lola Brigida is just as real a name as Groucho. Really? <laughs> well, his real name is Julius, you know. Okay, Gina, you call me Julius, and I'll call you the first thing in the morning. <laughs> and what about my husband? I'll call him later. <laughs> you don't understand. I am married. Lala, we'll cross that bridge at it when we come to it. <laughs> it's very funny, no? You answered your own question. <laughs> well, Gina, let me take you away from all this. Let's you and I go out and play. You bet your life. How do you play it? Well, I ask you a simple question, and if you give the right answer, we both win. <laughs> Out of it at you. <laughs> yeah, it really talks up a storm, doesn't he? You should have gotten his brother Harpo. They should have gotten Chico, my Italian brother. <laughs> right here. <laughs> Gina, molto piacere di vederti. Thank you, Perry. I know that you're supposed to be resting here, Gina, because you just finished a picture. Would you like to tell us about the picture you just made? Beautiful, but dangerous. Well, I have an idea, Gina. Let's sort of uh, live dangerously and do a beautiful song. Hmm? Okay, Perry. Would you like to try that? Uh, which is your good side, this side or this side? I am not bad in neither side. <laughs> I wish I were Groucho and I'd have an answer. But I don't know. <laughs> oh no, we left that out, didn't we? Thank you. 
Gina, Gina, mi sono veramente divertito. to the audience, but also to the musicians as well. I know the Mitchellers in the orchestra are eager to play the music for a real, real wonderful person, a real, real wonderful singer. Ladies and gentlemen, doing Accentuate the Positive, Miss Joe Stafford. Joe? <laughs> Magnificent. Well, thank you, Barry. Thank you. What you got here? Oh, you know how we use the chew, the chew. Chew? Yeah. 
true. Well, the shoe's nice. The stool bit on the show, and I thought uh, as long as we're down here in uh, sunny Miami, we'd use the uh, cabana chairs. Hmm? Good idea. Thank you. Like that. Can I help you? Let me sure. You got three there. Oh, John. here. Here, John. There's a nice little color for you. Mm. You know, you can almost get a tan here under these lights. That's true. Isn't this beautiful country down here with all the palm trees, coconut trees, bird oh, trees? Yeah. Don't forget the most important tree of all, however, gentlemen. What's that, Joe? The money tree. Put up an easy chair and sit yourself down and lean back. While we tell you about the folks that live in that town of Greenback. They never have to work on the hands and knees. Friends, comes times uh, for another one now, of our... stick with me, honey, and I have influence around here, and I can get you a job on the shelf. <laughs> Perry, I'd like you to meet this little lady. What, what is your name again? Melinda. Melinda? Melinda what? Melinda Marks. I'm your daughter. Oh, well, I, I remember you. I saw you on your daddy's show. Hey, you're wonderful. You should be used to television. You're not nervous, are you? Well, I feel a little less nervous on a quiz program. And me too. <laughs> I tell you, we always try to accommodate our guests, so why don't we have a little You Bet Your Life music, a little You Bet Your Life set, and uh, we'll see what we can come up with. Huh, fellas, please? <laughs> Our first contestants. Our first contestants are an aging comedian and his lovely young daughter. 
Come out, folks, and meet Groucho Como. <laughs> Welcome to Bet Your Life. Amazing. <laughs> An aging comedian and his young daughter. Which of you is the aging comedian? <laughs> now, you know the rules of our game, don't you? No. Oh, I wish you had said yes. <laughs> well, I'll explain. I asked the question, if you miss two in a row, you lose. If you guess four in a row, you win a thousand dollars. Do you pay attention? Not much, no. And if you get a chance, then you get a chance for $2,000 by answering another question, or $10,000, depending where the wheel stops. Now, do you understand? Is that one of the questions? <laughs> because if it is, we lose. <laughs> well, it's been enjoyable talking to you two. Well, that's mutual of Omaha. <laughs> you said that before. I'll continue until I get a laugh on it. <laughs> Time for, you, for the very best of your life. What category do you prefer? Spelling. Chicken plucking. <laughs> spelling. Okay, spelling. What's the... Now, here's, here's the, first, <laughs> the first question. Here's the cards over here. <laughs> now, here's the first question. I'll, I'll spell a word and you pronounce it. Right? Fair enough. All right, the first word is T-O. I don't care what your teacher said. T-O is pronounced toe. Is that your answer? No, T-O is pronounced two. That's right, honey. Now, pronounce T-O-O. -O. Well, that's obviously two toes. <laughs> no, that's also pronounced two. That's correct, sweetheart. Now, pronounce T-W-O. Watch it, kid. It's a trick question. <laughs> That is exactly correct. And now, for $1,000, pronounce the second day of the week. Okay, kid, you better let me handle this, huh? Daddy, I know the answer. Look, kid, I was around before you were born. Matter of fact, I was around when you were born. <laughs> okay, now, what's the answer? Pronounce the second day of the week. Well, this is ridiculous. It's Tuesday. I'm sorry. Daddy, the second day is Monday. Sunday, Monday. Once a barber, always a barber. <laughs> still, tri still trimming the customers, huh? Melinda, come here, sweetheart. Now, since you knew the answer, and your daddy wouldn't give you a chance to answer the question, if you'll, if you'll sing a song with me, <laughs> if you'll sing a song with me, I'll give you a solid gold de soda. We have two of those. What I'd like is some bubble gum. <laughs> And I'll give you a little solid gold bubble gum. Is it all right if I sing a cherry pop? Cherry pop? Cherry pop, cherry pop. Sing with any flavor you like. <laughs> sing, Dennis. Sing, Menace. <laughs> Smell blossoms and the trees are bare. All day long I seem to walk on air. I wonder why. I wonder why. I wonder why. I keep talking in my sleep at night. And what's more, I've lost my. Thing you can say to relieve that pleasant ache. 
you're not sick, you're just in love. From the Americana Hotel in Miami Beach, the Perry Como Show pauses briefly for station identification. Because we're here to uh, celebrate NBC's 30th anniversary, our request this tonight will be made up of songs that were popular 30 years ago. That would be 1926. We'll, we'll be back in a minute. Don't leave. Good night. 
that unite has lost its charm when they've done and rests with twilight blue. My lonely heart is sinking with a sigh. Mr. Harold Schaefer, president of the Gold Seal Company. celebrating its 30th anniversary here this week. With us tonight is the president of the National Broadcasting Company, Mr. Robert Sarnoff. Bob? <laughs> Bob, I got your title right, didn't I? You were the president of NBC, is that right? Well, Perry, so far this week I am. <laughs> <laughs> When you came on our first show this season, you were president and you still are. Isn't, it, uh, isn't there any chance for advancement in your organization? Well, you know, there's only one job higher than president, and that's vice president. <laughs> you had a wonderful turnout here, and we're very happy that uh, you invited our crew, and we're enjoying every minute of it, even though I had to work much harder this week. Yes, I saw you chopping away in the fourth hole this morning. <laughs> no, no, that was the fifth hole, boss. <laughs> Well, I'm getting to the National Broadcasting System, Bob, for 30 years of entertainment and public service. Thank you, Perry, and we, of course, are indebted to all of our affiliates. Ladies and gentlemen of our network, this birthday cake is for you, and I'm going to ask Perry to blow out the candles and make a wish. Perry? Thank you. I'm sorry, Perry. I forgot to tell you, this is an RCA cake.
Don't forget to tune in next week for our annual Christmas show. And tonight, you have been the guests of RCA, Sunbeam, and Glasswax. Men's Fashions by Orbach. Jewelry by Marvella. On Barry's Christmas show, his guests will be Rosemary Clooney, her sister Gail, Glenn Derringer, Robert Lamoray, and a visit by His Excellency Bishop Fulton J. Sheen. Hope to see you next week. This is Frank Gallup wishing from all of us to all of you a pleasant good night.